I'm here with Andrew Davis from the Clunberry School at the ICT and Education Conference. Thank you for coming to Doha. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you here. Could you tell us a little bit about Clunberry and what you're doing there? Yes, certainly. I'm Andrew Davis. I'm the head teacher of Clunberry Primary School in Shropshire. It's the sort of place where mobile phone signals don't work, GPS doesn't really exist. Uh, we have no fiber optics, so our broadband comes from a satellite dish attached to our school. I have site 10 miles away, and that's our communication. Uh, above all that, we won BECTA, which is the government's lead agency for ICT, award for best primary school in 2007 for ICT. Wow. So what sort of ICTs are you using in your school? We use a wide range of different technologies. Everything from uh, PCs to um, laptops, um, a lot of handheld technologies. We've got a lot of flip cams, portable technologies, um, Nintendo DS's. Uh, we, so we use a wide range of technologies. Um, MP3 recorders, so children have the ability to actually decide when and when it's appropriate to use ICT and they've got access to a wide range of resources to help them with their learning. So I'm sure a lot of people would say, why would a school in such a remote place embrace technology so much? How do you answer that? That's a good question. I think in, in rural places we need to embrace technology far more than schools in a much, an urban town, for example. You know, in the centre of London, some of these schools have got access to the ballet, to sort of local orchestras and everything else. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the country, in a very rural kind of, sort of um, location as we are, we don't have access to this. So the way we can do it is through bringing this into the classroom through ICT. Also with our parents, we only see 80% of our parents on, um, every now and again because most of the children are best in the school. But 80% are best in the school. So therefore, our way of communicating with parents is by email, text messaging, through our web, and through our blog. And over the last five years, we worked quite hard at developing this communication between the school and the parents. But now parents are picking up their iPhones to read our newsletters. So it's been a real advancement in technology. That's great. So you, when you, in, here in Doha, you did a couple of sessions on Web 2.0 in schools, which I think is a little bit different than a lot of what people think about in terms of technology yeah. in schools. A lot of people think just the infrastructure. Could you tell us a little bit about why you think Web 2.0 is useful and important to schools? I think one of the benefits of Web 2.0 so technologies is, first of all, it's widely accessible on the web. You can access it anytime, anywhere, from wherever you are. One of the next benefits is that it's free. There is no cost involved, generally, in actually using it. So what we'll, we'll do, we'll take a particular Web2 technology, we'll see then how we can actually exploit it for educational purposes. The majority are not written for education. But as teachers, we're always used to taking material, changing it, and adapting it for our pupils. And we do the same with the Web2s. So we'll take a standard piece of Web2 software, and we'll think, actually, how can we use this in the classroom and then we'll use that to actually support learning in the classroom. Okay. And what are some of the, the Web2 tools that you are using or that you've found effective? Okay, one of the things we use is Flickr for lots of photo sharing. Um, a, one program called Wallwisher, which is whereby people can actually post um, comments onto a, a shared wall. Um, Etherpad is another nice one, which, is, which sort of develops collaborative learning. People are actually leaving comments in real time. Mm. So children in the classroom can actually work on the same piece of work at the same time. And when they save it, everyone else can see what the changes are. So that's really good for developing sort of collaboration skills uh, with pupils. Other technologies we will use are, we use things like Storybird, which is a web-based um, literacy program to help children actually read their writing. And we've got a wide range of different maths resources we'll use as well. Now, here in Qatar, you've you had a chance to meet with a lot of teachers. How are you finding their willingness to explore these tools? I think the one thing I'm really impressed with is the enthusiasm I've seen from every single person who's been in one of my sessions. They want to learn, they hear, they give up their own time. And I think it's a real pleasure to see the dedication and how hard they're actually trying. If, and before you leave Qatar, what is some advice that you would leave for teachers here in terms of technology and Web2? I think the biggest advice is don't be scared of it. Uh, enhance it, embrace it. If you're not quite sure how to use it, the small children in your classrooms will soon figure out how. Absolutely.